What's going on everyone? Welcome back to EWC, Empire Watch Club. I haven't done a vlog in a very long time. However, there's a brand new start. EMC 2.0 is here. We are growing and I just wanted to let you guys know, we have a bunch of new content coming out. And best of all, we will be doing watch gatherings, watch meets. We're gonna be doing a collab with Red Bar Taiwan and Empire Watch Club meets right here at Taiolu Erling Yi Hao. So watch out for that. And if you guys wanna join, um, I guess you'll just have to follow along EWC IG and uh, you know, we'll have more information there. But today, uh, I kinda just wanted to talk about my watch collecting journey, where I'm at right now, uh, what I'm into, what I'm not into, what I think are the trends coming up. And you know, we've been through a lot the last couple of years. You know, you see all these people that thought of watches as investments rather than something that you're truly passionate about. The last four or five years, it's actually been truly amazing. I have never seen anything like this. And this is what I kind of want to talk to you about today. Uh, I kind of got sick of modern watches. I don't know why. I think modern watches got boring, but I still like modern, but I think I'm just very, very selective. It's not something that you know, I would just go out and buy. But there are a few pieces here and there that I think do a good job on modern watches, but it's just not special enough and it's not cool enough. And a lot of it is overpriced. But for me, I'm at a point where I'm actually looking into the past, but not too far in the past where it's like from the 50s, 60s, 70s vintage. I'm looking at the neo vintage stuff. I'm looking at the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. And I feel like that is where it's up and coming. Anyway, I wanna show you guys my paddock collection that I've built over the last couple of years. And if you guys saw on my IG Reels with Dizzy, this is the LV box that she got me. This is the prettiest, and it is the most expensive watch box that I've ever owned. Before, all my watch boxes are, you know, they're not bad, but they're not like great. Let me just show you guys. This is the old watch box that I have. Uh, I have a couple more of these. I still do like these a lot, and I think these are very well made. These are not cheap either, and I'll still probably use these, but this is my baby. This is the bad girl. So, yeah. If you're a real watch collector, you gotta have something nice like this, right? Either an LV one or a Goyard, or you can get custom boxes. But, you know, this is something, I guess, kind of like a gold standard. I'm gonna open her up to show you my paddock collection. Ta-da! All right, I'm gonna tilt it a little bit so you guys can get a better view and I will go into each one, I will take them out. Everyone knows me as the rig man. That's because the last three, four years, I've just been wearing rose and yellow gold and that's it. However, I do have one stainless new acquisition that I got. This one is really, really cool. This is a Nautilus 3710. This came after the 3700. You know, it was only in production for about like six, seven, eight years. I, I can't recall exactly, but this is really cool because it was the first complication for an Nautilus. Uh, it has a power reserve, and this was known as the Comet. It's a little bit thinner than the 5711s, and this is stainless steel. It's got a matte black dial, very beautiful, very pretty, and this is the only paddock Nautilus that has Roman numerals on the dial. I just wish that the date window was black, uh, but I do think that this is a very sporty watch, very elegant. You know, this is from the late 90s, early 2000s. This is what I'm talking about with the Neo Vintage segment. That time period, I feel like they're hidden gems. They're a little bit undervalued. They're a little bit cheaper than all the modern counterparts. So these are really good deals. And you know what? It says a lot about you when you wear something like this. When I see this on someone over at 5711, I'm thinking, damn, you got style, you know watches. Now this is my holy grail. You guys saw this on my IG Reels. I did a trade for three watches. This is the 5980 1400R-011. This is all iced out, almost 40 carats of baguettes. You know what, I am the rig man, but I'm also in love with ice. Doesn't get any better than this. All right, this is my holy grail watch. If you're a fucking G, this is the watch you gotta have. It's loud, it's bling, it's, it's probably like shining in your eyes when you can't see shit, but hey, this is me. This is fucking me. I'm sorry for cursing all the time, but God, looking at this makes me wanna curse. I'm sure if you had it, you'd feel the same fucking way. But I do like the fact that they have iced out baguettes for the markers on the dial, and I like my factory ice, but 
you know what? I want to talk to you guys something about aftermarket stuff in another vlog or podcast, uh, which we will be doing soon. This would probably be my favorite modern Nautilus, and this is why I have two. This is the OG Sunny Wang watch. This is kind of the watch that started BWC Vlogs and put us on the map. We did an opening for this watch, the 5980R. This is kind of banged up. It's got a lot of scratches on it. It's not perfect. I've worn this for years and I still wear it. This is something that I genuinely love. You know what? It's kind of cool to have both of these because this is not an everyday watch, but this could be an everyday watch. But these are discontinued. Um, I think these will hold the value. They could be investment pieces, but I still love them and I do wear them. However, these are my biggest paddocks. These are the biggest watches that I have. Slowly, I kind of grown out of large modern watches. And this is why I wanted to show you guys my paddock collection because I'm at a point where I'm glowing. And, and when I'm talking about the watches that are coming and, and these watches that I'm about to show you, I have an even bigger smile because I know that's where my heart is. And this is what watch collecting should be. Of course, I wish that all my watches could hold value or they could go up in value, that I could buy, trade, sell, and I could keep rolling the money and make more money and profit. But that's not what I'm gonna do with this collection. This collection is here to stay and I'm happy with it. And I wear it. And when I put it on my wrist, when I get dressed up, when I go out, it makes me feel good. I'm confident, I'm happy. And that's the most important thing. You should be happy with your watches. I'm really not trying to show off, okay? Uh, I just wanted to show you guys my collection and where I'm at. But with EWC, I do want to start selling watches more and more. I wanna be able to find certain watches for you guys. I want my team to grow. They're learning a lot, especially the last few years. We've helped our own friends sell a couple of watches. I've sold a couple of my own watches in my collection. I really think that EWC has also grown to a point where EWC can really start to sell watches. So watch out for that, all right? Uh, we will have watches coming up for sale. Hopefully you guys will like the stuff that we sell because they will be catered more towards what's about to come up, which is all Neo Vintage. Neo Vintage is where I think the trend is going. Neo Vintage is still undervalued. However, I feel like there's more charm, there's more charisma, there's more passion. Overall, more beautiful, for me at least. The next watch that I wanna show you guys is something that I picked up from my dear friend, Amsterdam Vintage Watches, Jasper, Rutger. You know, these guys I've been friends with for years. This was actually on the wrist of Rutger, and uh, you know, he didn't wanna take it off. And I was talking to Ramon and uh, he was just like, yeah, just talk to Jasper, just take it from uh, Rutger and he's all good. But uh, this is the very first Aquanaut with full link bracelet, all yellow gold. The grenade, 5065 J. This is about 38 millimeters in diameter. It's not that thick. And I really love the bracelet. It's different, it's very sexy. It's got a see-through case back. Paddock used to mark back of the case. Obviously it has, you know, the gold markings, but there's one side that has a dog face. I was born the year of the dog, 1982. So when I saw that right here at the corner, it's a face of a dog. It's like a bulldog or something. These are really cool watches to have. This came from the early 2000s. I do think that this will be an ultra, ultra collector's piece. It did go up a lot in price already. Uh, I got a steal from the Amsterdam boys. Thank you, Jasper. Dude. You're amazing. I just wanted to give a shout out to the boys over in Amsterdam. I love you guys. I'll see you guys soon. Next up is the 3800 slash 103. I really got into these because I sold my 3700, kind of regretted it, but then I started to think, okay, well, there's the 3800. And I started to kind of borrow my wife's 3800. And I realized, you know what, it's a good size. I love my diamonds, so I literally bumped into this watch through a friend, super mint condition. He never even took a link off, it was just sitting in the safe. This is from early, early 2000s, a little more than 20 years ago. 
full diamond bezel, really, really interesting diamond dial, almost pave, center is gold, double rubies on each marker, and they used a white gold clasp for, for this, so this is not yellow gold. I really got into 3800s, and I do think these are undervalued. I am looking more into 3800s, and I think EWC will probably be able to sell a couple 3800s very soon. And a lot of you saw that I got two at the same time. So I got the blue dial 3800 slash three. This is with the diamond bezel as well and diamond markers. This is the navy blue dial, super classic. I know a lot of people prefer the non-diamonds, but I, like I said, I am the rig man and I'm also the ice man now. Dude, this is just sexy. This one is actually from the 80s. As you can tell, the early mid 80s, they still use the same type of clasp that the 3700s used. But this is gold, but it's a lot thinner. This style was different from this. Put it side by side. You see the difference now? Yes, that's actually quite a big difference, huh? This one has the white date window, which is really beautiful. Uh, this one has the black date window, just goes well. So as you can see, I've really gotten into mid-size watches. I, I know a lot of you guys will still be like, yeah, I like my like 40 millimeter watches. I get it, but that's part of the watch collecting journey. I think that guys that really get into watches, they need to go through this. You always start with the 40 millimeters. I get it, or even with bigger watches. But I do feel like once you become a real watch guy, real watch geek, you start to really like and love the mid-size watches. This is where I want to take everyone into the next phase and also the final phase of what we want to talk about today, kind of wrap everything up, which is complications from the 1980s, 90s, and the early 2000s. These complications, as well as grand complications, are something that I am in love with. And yeah, this is what I have on my wrist today. This is 5140R, a early 2000s, 5140 is an ultra thin. It's the more modern version of the 3940s. This is a perpetual calendar, but it has a golden sunburst brown dial, which I think is really sexy. It's not too dark, kind of like a caramel, sunshiny, goldish tone. And it's got white lettering, white text, very classy. My wife saw me wearing it the other day and they're like, oh, you really are turning into an old man. I don't know, I'm in my 40s now um, and I've slowly become a fan of these kind of watches and these are really cool. I do think that the value is where it got me to. It's a grand complication. It's a professional calendar, ultra thin, rose gold, see-through case back, Calatrava deployment clasp. It's one of the staples, 240Q movement. This movement, ultra sturdy, ultra stable. Does it get any better than this? And it's a paddock. It's a fucking paddock. Under 50K USD? Really? Dude, it's a no-brainer. So this is what I've been into. And, and I'm very excited about these because I think that people are really gonna start looking into the different dials, especially for something like this. This is the 3945. This is the counterpart to the 3940 and it has a mesh gold bracelet. This is all rose gold. This is kind of like a jewelry piece. You could probably see Gordon Gecko from Wall Street wearing this. This piece, beautiful, classic. Ultra thin again, 240Q movement, perpetual calendar, ivory, white, satin, silver kind of dial, creamy dial. The hands, gorgeous. The text is even more beautiful than the 5140R. Okay, this is a 36 millimeter case. This though, I found this under 50K. This is all gold. Gold has gone up a lot in price just because of this, right? For me, this is a grail as well. These watches with these special kind of like bracelets. This is gonna be really popular and really in demand because these are undervalued. People, you guys need to start looking into these watches. These are grails, undervalued grails. The last one is a World Time. This is a 5110J, yellow gold. I, I bumped into this watch as well because a friend had it, didn't want it anymore. 37 millimeters, good size. Also a yellow gold Calatrava deployment clasp. I've never had it, it just really looks, looks really cool because if you press it, it changes the cities and whenever you travel, you can kind of set up your time and then you just kind of click it to know where 
wherever you were or the next place you're traveling to, you know, that's why it's called the World Time. It's got all the cities around the world. And I kind of want to get something for Taipei. I don't know if I can change it at the service center or something, if I can figure that out. If, if you guys know, let me know. But uh, what's really beautiful about this is the hands. I really like the hands of the 5110 more than the 5130. Also, the center of the dial is a guilloche. You know, there's something in there that just oozes like high class. I'm so high class. And I'm wearing this. I should be in this nice suit and traveling first class. And these are undervalued as well. Dude, less than 35K USD, really? You know, there's, there's a lot of good deals. A lot of good steals out there. So you guys will be seeing me playing more with these style dress watches and these complications from Paddock. And I have been getting more into these watches because I do feel like there's a lot of treasures out there to look for. I hope you guys like where I'm going with my watch collection. I hope you guys like this style of vlog. I know it's a little longer. I went more into detail about each watch. I know you guys really wanted me to talk about my collection and see my collection. So I brought out most of my Paddock collection. I do have a couple more coming and I'll update my Paddock collection very, very soon. But guys, let me know. Comment below, what is your favorite paddock out of all these nine watches that I've shown you guys today? And let me know what other content you guys want to see and what you guys want me to talk about in the upcoming EWC podcasts. And don't forget to comment, subscribe, share with all your friends. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for all of you that have watched till the very end. Uh, we have new EWC t-shirts coming. Everyone, comment below. We're gonna choose five lucky winners. Good luck, look out for the next EWC event coming up at EMC headquarters. We'll see you guys here. Peace out, on to the next one. We'll see you guys next time on EWC.